ladies, you best be interviewing the old timers before it's too late. They've got a lot of great stories to tell. Well, Jesse James lived to be 100 years old up in the Dallas, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And in 1948, he came out and told the world, I'm Jesse James. Yeah, because he did announce. After I saw him, my grandma was dying, and my grandpa says, they had finally got a phone in their house, and he had called her and grandma to talk to Jesse, and she says, do you know that nice man whose lap you sat on? Remember he told you he was Jesse James? I said, yeah. She says, he, he told the world he was Jesse James. So you remember the event? I remember the event when it came out that he, and it was in the newspaper. It was in the news, yes, little was. newspaper. Well, see, I, I met him, I was four years old, and that was in 1940, 39, 40, 41, 42. That was in 42, and he came out a year or two later. Yeah, no, so I was old enough to remember. Later. I was old enough to remember when it came in the newspaper. I will tell you how I met Jesse. I was staying at my grandmother's, and she had bone cancer and was dying. Now her mother was a cousin to Jesse's mother. And they were headed for the Dallas, Oregon together when the train companies forced them out of, of their farms and out of their homes in Missouri. And they lived in Joplin. My grandparents stopped in up by Boise because they had an uncle living up there with a hotel for the gold miners and he needed help. But Jesse went on up to Oregon. Well, my great-grandmother wrote to his family all of the years that she lived. And after she died, my grandmother wrote to her, to his family. And when she got so sick, he decided to come and see her. And of course he chose to come in the middle of a Wyoming blizzard. The night that he came there, we had a raging blizzard going on. Knocked on the door, and my grandfather let him and this older, other older man in. And I talked to both of them. But I wound up sitting on Jesse's lap by the, the wood-burning stove so he could get warm. And he was telling me stories about when he was why he told me the story of why he became a bank robber and uh, uh, robbed the trains. And the reason was that there was train money on the trains, there was train money in the bank. So he would take the money just from the banks and the train that belonged to the train companies and gave it to the people who were being forced out of their homes and off their land by the train companies. <laughs> and we got checking into it and that was exactly what he was doing. He was helping people move and get reestablished and get put homes together. He, he said that he wrote with, rode with the Dalton gang for a while. I know that there was one guy, and this is one of the stories he told us, there was a guy that rode with him. Now Jesse didn't want to kill people. All he wanted to do was get the money and leave. Well this one guy would shoot people and kill them. What? Would shoot people and kill them. Mm -hmm. And Jesse didn't like that. So one day they got in a fight and Jesse and him, Jesse shot him. And then he says, told the people, that's Jesse James. I remember Jesse telling me that story because he wanted people to think he was Jesse James 
because the government had given, offered him amnesty if he would leave Missouri and go someplace else. And that's when he decided to go up to Oregon. And he lived to be a, over 100 years old. I think it was 101 before 104. he died. 104. 104? Yep. I know yeah. that, I didn't know exactly, but I know it was over 100. Right. Jesse was, when I met Jesse, he was a little rounder. Yeah, he, he, he was a little bit plumper, and, but he sat me on his lap by that stove, and he told me stories till I fell asleep in his arms. It must have been, he must have told me stories for over an hour. And finally, I just, I'm warm. And he wrapped me up in his arms, and next thing I know, they're laying me in bed by my grandma. But he says, well, she held out longer than I thought she would. And I remember him telling her that. And my grandma says, yeah, she's a tough little fighter. And see, I had some very serious health problems as a child. I nearly died. I had rheumatic fever and I had a, when I was born, the bottom third of my stomach was calcified closed. And the doctor from California came in there and told the doctors how to rehydrate me and get that to, to working. And that was feeding me oatmeal. I detest oatmeal. I won't eat oatmeal. You can get me eating oatmeal ever again. But it was just a... Growing up at that time, we, we lived well, they never even had electricity. My grandparents never had electricity in their house till, till years after my grandma died. And except for one light, they brought it in and put it over the, the dining room table. But they couldn't afford to put it through the rest of the house for, for years. And then after she passed away, we found out she'd been saving money and sending it every month for an insurance policy. And he's had enough land or money to get a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And they put electricity in. Well, now I'm going to tell you something that only one other people, two other people knew. After Jesse was there to see my grandma, he asked me what I'd like to have of my very own. I said, my own horse. I didn't know, you know, just a little kid, I didn't know. I says, I want a horse. Well, guess what showed up one day? <laughs> a little Appaloosa horse that had been trained by the Indians, and it looked so safe. I rode that horse until it died. I loved my horse, and my grandpa finally told me that Jesse had sent it to me. Now, how, who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I'll get one for Christmas. But my, then we had to leave <coughs> Star Valley and come down here because my dad's like I am, I am now. He would get pneumonia every winter and wind up in the hospital for a couple of months. And now I get pneumonia every winter. I've had it nine times in eight years. <laughs> And I'm battling, keeping up, trying to keep from getting up now. So, so you probably said, but I missed it. So, your your family was friends with with Jesse James, or related to him, or? Oh, now, what my grandma told me was her mother was a cousin to Jesse's mother. Uh -huh. And the reason now I'm going to tell you the reason why Jesse went on a rampage against the trains. The men had gone to get firewood for the winter, and the women were at Jesse's mother's home, finishing up the last canning of fruit, the last of the fruit for the winter, and tying a quilt. Well, my grandmother, or great-grandmother, took her two kids home because they started getting sick, and she didn't want the other kids to get sick, so she went home. Well, the next day, there was 
people running around all over town saying that somebody had broken into Jesse's mother's home. Well, some bullies from the train had gone there, broke into the house because they wanted them out of the house. They wanted the land and they didn't want to have to wait for it. Well, they beat and raped the children and the women that were there. And Jesse's mother died from it. Jesse went after the trains. That's when he went after it. But he says, I wanted the money so these people could get out of there so that they could have re establish themselves somewhere else and not have to worry about money about it. And that's why he did it. He felt that the trains should pay for what they did. And he should pay to help these people relocate. And that's why he went after the trains. That's why he went after their money. And the thing is, when he raided those banks, or he took money off the trains, it was train money that he took. He wouldn't take any other money. He just took money that belonged to the train companies. And they won't tell you that. But that's, that's what Jesse told me. And my uncle wrote that down. Oh, really? And he read me, I don't know what happened to the notebooks, but he read me some of the stories. But that one really stuck with me because it was telling me exactly why yeah. he went into robbing the trains and the banks. And he says, he says, I didn't want other people's money. He says, they worked hard for it. It belonged to them. Those train companies weren't working hard for it. It was the millionaires back east that was putting those trains in and they were going to do it when they wanted to do it and how they wanted to do it. And they didn't care about the little people. So he took their money. He took their money and gave it back to the little people so that they could have a way to start over again. And to me, that makes him a hero. I don't care if they say he's a bank robber and he's a bad man. I do know he never killed anybody during the time he was an outlaw. And I do know that he used the money that he got to help those that had been robbed by the train companies. Do you remember any of the stories that he told you other than that one? Do you remember some of, what some of the other stories well, he, he told you? Well, he told me, he told me the story. Now, see, I'm remembering them from my uncle reading them to me. Oh. Now, he told me why. He told me the story about his mother and my grandmother talked a little bit about that. About his, his mother. Because he, she says, I need the things that the, the train people did to her hurt her so badly she died from it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was a teenager that I really realized what had happened to her. But it's sad. But those rich people weren't satisfied with what they had, that they had to go in there and, and just destroy people's lives and their homes to get even more money. Okay. Yep, that's him. You'll be happy to know his mother did not die. Good. She, this is 19, about 1920 in Hereford, Texas. And mm -hmm. Well, they said that she was so badly hurt that she died from it. Yeah, she but, did. She did get injured. It messed her arm up or did something. Well, my my grandma told me that one of our relatives rode with Contrell, and then she finally told me it was Jesse. <laughs> yeah, he definitely rode with him. Well, see, she kept referring to him as Kim, you know, from down in the south as Kim, and. Jesse was our kin. Jesse's mother was our kin. See, so there has to be a relationship there somehow. Yeah. See, that's why I want to get the information from you, because I can follow that back and see yeah. where it ties in. Well, see, my grandma's name was Mary Anna Johnson, but her mother's name was Caroline Amanda Howard, and 
her father's name was uh, John Nelson Johnson. Now I think, I know that my grandmother, great grandmother was Cherokee. Mm -hmm. I think that, J that John Nelson Johnson may have been Cherokee too. I can't find it and prove it. It's not in the genealogy records in the genealogy library. <laughs> or at least it wasn't the last time I was able to go about 10 years ago. Have you ever went and had your DNA? We can never afford it. Well, that's when you get your kids to do it. My kids, <laughs> my kids, <laughs> they took me away here and forgot about me. I've got one son I saw last year for the first time in five years. He came to see me when I was in the hospital for three, two and a half months with pneumonia. I spent a half hour with him. Now when that guy come down to get you this morning, did he tell you there are three very dashing young men out here to see you? No, when, when he came, he came down and he said, Gene, you got company. I said, this is a stand. And I said, oh man, I forgot. <laughs> did, you, did you tell the story when I was looking at pictures, not paying attention? Mm -hmm. Did you tell the story about how Jesse got on the train Oh, yes. And, the, yeah. No, I didn't. He wasn't well, going to rob it, but. He got on the train and was, he was going to rob it about 20 miles down the, the, the thing and then get off. Well, my grandma got on there and she had her two kids, two oldest kids, and she was going back to Missouri to have her third child. And uh, Jesse saw her on the train, and the kids had hooking cough. And he had a nice big warm coat. So he said, he pretended like they didn't know each other. They pretended like they didn't. And he wrapped the kids up in his coat and helped her all the way to, the, to where they got off. He turned around and went back on the train. And when he got back there, he, he held it up and his men were waiting there for him to come back and they helped him hold up the train and they robbed it and my grandmother had a letter and I saw that letter and I don't know to this day where it went to but he had sent her and saying thanks for being on the train that day because if I'd have held it up I'd have got a little bit of money but when I held it up coming back this way, there was a great big shipment of money on the train for the train company. But they just had a little bit of money going east and coming back, he got about 10 times what he would have <laughs> So now, did I hear you correctly that there is a letter somewhere that you wrote to her? And my aunt had that letter and she passed away of breast cancer years ago and so that her, her husband's gone now and we have searched and searched and we cannot find anywhere that any trace of that letter. But we think, we don't know, but we think there was somebody who worked for the train company who knew when the shipments were going and where they were going to be in the banks and was letting him know. <laughs> This was, we never have been able to prove that, but we all, we all thought it. So you had uh, different outlaws coming through then, you had Jesse James, or I guess with Jesse James, he wasn't robbing back when he came in. No, he, 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 he was reformed, he, he didn't do that He anymore. was living up in Oregon, and would you believe the name he was using up there? What? Jesse Howard. Hmm. And see, he was going to, to my great-grandparents were going up to the Dallas, Oregon, and I got stopped at that hotel with their uncle. Their last name was Howard. <coughs> and so he took our family name so that he could use it as his name. And uh, it is just very interesting that I, I got a big kick out of him though that night. He he kept tickling me and I'd giggle and I'd 
And my grandma kept saying, don't tickle her too much or she's going to pee on me. And I nearly did. <laughs> um, when you watch that uh, video mm -hmm. where he was in the bed and he reached up and grabbed the bucket, did you see his index finger? No, I didn't. It's his index finger was black and it was chewed off on the end. Tell him the story about him poking me in the belly. <laughs> yeah, he kept poking me in the belly with that finger. I forgot about his finger. And I and my grandma says, don't poke her too much or she's going to pee on you. And I nearly did because I was very ticklish and I would have picked. I would have. <laughs> It wouldn't have made any difference if you're telling me you're going to get it. <laughs> well, I remember asking her, do you remember, did he uh, have a finger that was messed up? She said yes. Yeah, he did. I, it almost looked like some kind of animal had chewed the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he did to it, but it was all, all messed up. And you can see in that video, when he reaches up to grab the bucket, you can see his black <laughs> finger down. I asked him what, what happened to his finger. I remember asking him, he says, we won't talk about that. <laughs> he wouldn't tell me what he did to his finger. <clears throat> and I says, well, my daddy hit his finger with a hammer, and it's black, but it's not funny chewed up. It's not like somebody did it. And I keep thinking, what animal was he tormenting? Well, it was a Mexican. <laughs> oh. Oh. You got to see your bitten bite. Yeah, I can imagine. And so the reason you met Butch Cassidy and, and that was your family trade horses with them or they no. were friends with them through Jesse James? Well, or they, he stayed with them at times or what? Well, no. What, how I met Butch Cassidy was... My grandfather drove the mail stage, my grandfather and great-grandfather, from Afton to Pocatello and back. And he'd go out there to get his supplies at Pocatello. Well, my grandmother was sick and I couldn't stay with her. So, and my parents were, were away for the weekend. I think it was when they came down here to find a house to move down here. And uh, so Grandpa took me on the stage with him. And he says, now you have to sit in here and be a good girl. You, when we stop, if you need to go to the bathroom or anything or need a drink, tell me and we'll take care of it. So my grandfather was one of the honoriest old coots you ever met in your life. So anyway, I'd tell him and we'd take care of things and uh, Bush got on and he says, now if he bothers you, he says, you hit the top of the, he gave me his cane because he walked with the cane. He says, you hit the roof of the stage, stage and I'll stop and come down and take care of problems. Well, Bush never bothered me. I rode out there road back and only thing like I said he was drunker than drunk but when we were coming back he reached in the bag and he gave me a big stick you remember the big sticks of candy that were cinnamon and that he gave me a cinnamon big stick of cinnamon candy twist. and that my brother ate most of it so did your, did your grandpa know that it was Butch Cassidy Huh? He, so knew, he knew him, huh? He knew who he was. Huh? And he says, if he bothers you, you just hang on the top of the, the stage and I'll come down here and take care of him. Did, did uh, Jesse James come and visit a lot that you remember or not? Or just to I understand that he came three times, but I was only there the one time. And then my grandma died and I, he never came back again. And they, can you believe they had all kinds of very questionable visitors. There was another guy who came in there with his wife, and then he liked it so much. They stayed there, got a farm, or had a farm there, and stayed there. 
because of but you know the governor protected the outlaws in Wyoming they could go there and be safe so it's just but I, I remember this guy with his wife coming there and spending some time with my grandma and my grandpa and he had been an outlaw and he rolled with the Dalton gang when he was he was younger than Jesse and them, and I says, well, how old were you when you rode with the, the Dalton gang? And he says, I was about 12 or 13, maybe 14, with just a young kid riding with them. And I says, what did you do? He says, I held the horses. He was the one that would hold on the horses when they go in and commit a robbery, and then they come out and jump on the horses and take off. <laughs> he was the horse holder. So, did uh, Jesse tell you any stories about uh, um, hiding money around the, for the Knights of the Golden Circle or anything like that? Did you ever hear anything of that? Or no. Did he just tell you why he was robbing, what got him to rob? Yeah, was the, when they broke in and beat his mom and raped her and. But she never got over it. She never got over what those men did to her. And he always attributed that that was what finally killed her. That's what those men did. And I can tell you, I was beaten and, and raped when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. And I've never gotten over it. Mm -hmm. You don't get over it. So did he, did he, he did tell you how he was able to escape the law about uh, assuming somebody else's identity. Yeah. You did say that he shot somebody because they was killing people and he didn't like that. Yeah. He did. He shot one of the guys that rode with him because he, he shot a couple of people, bystanders, when they were robbing the bank for getting money out, stealing the train money out of the bank. And he shot two guys, so Jesse shot him. <coughs> and then told them it was Jesse James. And he told you that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, I, I shot one of my own men. He says, I don't believe in killing people. But this man was out of control, and I shot him. And he says, for good reason. He shot two innocent bystanders at a bank robbery. They were just standing there, not doing anything and he shot him. One was a woman and the other was a, a young man huh? about in his early 30s. And he says, I didn't like that so I shot him. He says, as far as I know, he's the only man that I killed. But he says, I shot and wounded some men. But he says, I never shot to kill. I might wound them, but I won't kill them. And I kind of took kids' advice about wounding people. I used to be a federal marshal. For the, I was working, finding homes to relocate witness protection people to move into. People who had gone to court and testified against someone and they brought this woman to me with her kids. She was the second wife to this man and she had testified against the mommy's drug dealing. And I uh, took her to show her a house and his kids, two boys from his previous marriage, had followed him. Well we had two cops there and they arrested the boys and I was going to take them to another house. And uh, the two boys started fighting the police officers, and one got away and managed to get in his truck. And he came at me, and I had, to, when I was out like that, I had to have a badge and a pistol. And I had a, <laughs> the badge didn't have my real name on it. That was the smart thing, they didn't put my real name on it. 
So when he, he came out, I was trying to get them in my van to leave the woman and her kids in. He got in his truck and started towards us. And I shot him in the shoulder. Of course, I took his windshield out. I shot three bullets into his motor and I took his front tires out. And I got in. Uh, all I had to do was move that gun that far half an inch and he would have been dead. I didn't want to kill him, but they caught him. He was madder about me shooting his truck on than him getting shot. It turned out it was a brand new truck. <laughs> so anyway, they took him and put him in prison. The two of them and went to prison for dealing drugs and selling drugs all over the country for their dad. And when they got out, they got out about two months before their dad did. And they were waiting for him when he got out. Well, they had been carrying on the dealing of drugs and, and bringing in the drugs, even while they were in prison. And so they were going to re-arrest them and put them to trial again and put them back in prison. Well. The two boys had guns. And see, they wanted to get Dad out of prison, and they were going to come back up here and find me and, and take care of me for getting them caught to begin with. So anyway, they had a shootout with the police, the police officers that were waiting to arrest them, and all three of them were killed. And I thought, well, don't have to worry, because a friend of mine that was a federal marshal came and told me that. I worked with him when I was working as a federal marshal. But I had to be a federal marshal to be able to find homes for the witness protection program. Can you can you imagine this whole body doing all of these things over the years? All of the wonderful fun things that I've done. And, but I, I loved, my cousin Lonnie says, come back to Wyoming, we'll put you in the house on the ranch that Grandpa left. I says, I can't take the winners. So did he remember Jesse James too then? He wasn't there. He uh, never ever got to see him that uh, time. He and was uh, he there the other times when Jesse came, do you think, or you don't know? No, we were moving. We were living down here oh. now, and Grandma just told me he had come back to see yeah. her. Yeah. And he asked her about the little girl. Where's oh, yeah. the little girl? So she says he was quite taken with you, honey. And I says, well, I like him too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can give you a horse and. <laughs> yeah, my little horsey and that horse I rode. That little horse. My grandpa didn't have room for it on his little farm, so we took it up to the ranch. And I rode that thing all over that ranch. I love that horse. A lot of people don't know this, but my grandfather told it to me, and I'm not sure. So it's just a possibility. Yeah. But Butch owned one of the places to make money up in Jackson Hole. Hmm. But he used a different name, and I don't know when he... Yeah. But they said that he, he made a lot of money off of the place that he built and run in Jackson Hole. Huh? 